So you're the new escort the girls have been talking about. And you've already been sent off on an errand, eh? Poor boy. You'll be knackered before the real work begins later on tonight. I'm told you share a bedchamber with Tatian. Did she say anything to you before? Before she went missing. Only that she needed to meet with someone. She did mention a name, but I know exactly who she meant. You do? Lad from the garrison. Annoying little shit. Spent every gilly earned on Tatien and picked fights with anyone else who tried to buy her time. Followed her around like a lost puppy. Tatien was flattered at first, but it didn't take long for her to get scared. She thought about saying something. But the dame was so proud of her for how much she was bringing in, and she didn't want to let her down. This man from the garrison, did you ever see him? Of course I did. He tried to sneak into our room enough times. Slimy sod's got a scar over one eye. Claims he got it in battle. You've been very helpful. Don't let him get away with this. Find him, and you'll find her. A man from the garrison. It seems a trip to the barracks is in order. So it seems as though we have ourselves a little bit of a side quest that we have to do. Now, I was avoiding putting most of the side quests in this video series because they tend to drag on for quite a bit. Most of them don't have much in the way of relevance. But this, I guess, really isn't a side quest. It's just sort of like a sub quest. The bones fell favorably. I'm looking for a man with a scar over his eye. Looking for a man? Does this look like a brothel, Branded? Fuck off! Hold your tongue. He wears the dame's brooch. One word from him and the Vale's doors will be barred to us for good. <sighs> There's only one man in the garrison with a dodgy eye. His name's Yannick. I haven't seen him around lately, though. On account of him being in war, y y Yannick left a few days back. Said he had dealings with a merchant there. The dame thanks you. Moor is the last village on the road to Oriflam. I should let Isabel know where I'm headed. I guess it's less of a side quest or an optional quest and more of just a small, like, subsection of the overall main quest. Because Isabel's helping us, we gotta help her, you know? Clive, tell me you bear good tidings. That remains to be seen. Oh, Tatiana, you could have told me. This Yannick. The soldiers I spoke to believe he's in the village of Moor. According to them, he claimed to have some business with a merchant there. Though that wouldn't explain his continued absence. And you plan on traveling to Moor to ascertain the truth? Isn't that what you want? Oh, it, it is, but I fear sending you there may cause more harm than good. The people of Moor are rather set in their ways. You'll find they have little love for bearers, and they will not hesitate to report one such as you to the constabulary. There is a man in Moor who owes me a favor, more than one, in fact. His name is Bertrand, and he works at the stables. Tell him I sent you. I shall return as soon as I find something. So, we have our quest. Now, something that I think that they missed a step on in this game is the quality of the side quests. Now, of course, the quality isn't going to be as good as something like The Elder Scrolls or Fallout. But there is a pretty big difference with the way that these games are structured compared to, like, a Bethesda game or The Witcher or something like that. In those other traditional open-world games, you tend to have your main quest, which usually is not very long. If you just stick to the main quest, you can hammer through it inside of a few hours. But then you have the side quest, which is where the real meat of the game is, and you're expected to spend the bulk of your time doing that. Because of that, they tend to be a lot more interesting. Plus, the game tends to be built around them as opposed to them being a sort of small optional thing that you're doing along the side. Now, Final Fantasy game is a very different thing. It goes for a very 
long and deep engrossing story for the main quest and then the side quests are things that really just sort of exist as a kind of I don't, I don't know how to phrase it perhaps just a kind of side effect of the world that they exist in you can't have a world that this that is this big without other things to do so like there were tended to be little things that you could do in earlier Final Fantasy games, like the jump roping mini game or the racing mini game or whatever in Final Fantasy IX or the Gold Saucer or something like that in Seven. But the mini games and side quests in that tended to be very small, little optional things just to add a little bit of flavor. But when you have an open world game like this, side quests essentially become necessary because if you don't have them, the world feels empty. And it doesn't matter how beautiful the world is, doesn't matter how much lore you put into it, world building you put into it. If there's nothing to do in a world, the world feels empty. So you gotta put side quests in and you gotta put them all over the damn place. Enough at least to give you a reason to go to these different landmarks that you can see off in the distance. But, you know, you don't really have the same kind of budget to go and start throwing all sorts of resources at these mini games in a in a JRPG like this. So if you look at something like the animations that you're seeing during these really well established and beautifully rendered and lit and animated cutscenes where Clive is talking to Jill and they're about to fight Efreet and whatever, all this kind of kind of stuff. They have they have all of these like well animated expression expressionate cuts expression is that a word? Expressive cutscenes. They're talking, they're moving, they have facial expressions, they turn their head, they're blinking, they smile, whatever. Then you have these other cutscenes, which tend to just fill out the less important moments, and the side quests are less important moments, but they more or less just stand there and they wave their arms a little bit like a Resident Evil character. And unfortunately, that's like, not only the, the side quest kind of pointless and boring, but they don't look as good. Are you Bertrand? The dame sent me. Sounds about right. Only time I hear from her is when she wants something. Well, go on then. What is it? One of her courtesans has gone missing. And I need to find her. A soldier who may have information on her whereabouts is rumored to have come here to meet with a trader. Many traders stop to peddle their wares on their way to the capital, but only one's been seen quarreling with a soldier. Is he still here? The trader? Oh, yeah. Stubborn sod stood his ground till the soldier got tired of shouting, from what I hear. If you seek him out, keep your head down. Fact is, folks round here would sooner hang a branded than help him. And that's even with the dame's brooch for protection. Understood. What's this? A branded? Where's your master? Must I call for the constable? I come to you from Northreach, at the behest of the dame. Perhaps you've heard of her. Why, of course I have. I am the good lady's servant. Oh, what is it that she requires of me? Rumor has it you were seen arguing with a soldier some few days ago. A soldier with a scar over his eye. Uh, yes, uh, yes, that's right. Uh, he had a comb which he <laughs> claimed was an antique. Said he wanted to trade it for a newer one. But although it was an antique, it most certainly was not, as I told him. Nevertheless, he insisted that it was of great value and was quite vehement about my appraisal. I stood firm, however, and for all his bluster, he still purchased a new comb, albeit an inexpensive one. And do you know where he went after that? My customers aren't usually in the habit of telling me whither they are bound, but as it happens, this one did. Yonder ruins, strange as it may sound. 
My thanks. Not at all. I would do anything for the day. Anything. Uh, be sure and tell her, won't you, that I was helpful, I mean, most helpful. So interesting position that we find ourselves here in because the fact that Clive has the branded mark on his face indicating he's a slave has in the past meant quite a bit of negative attention towards him. Nobody wants to talk to a slave. They think he's lesser than them. But the further we get towards the imperial capital, the more and more strongly people hold these views. And we're at a point where people wouldn't spit on you to put out a fire. So the fact that, the, that Isabel is somebody we're working with does have something of a value to apply here because people wouldn't talk to him, but they think he's working for Isabel, so well, nobody wants to piss off the local of the owner of the local whorehouse. So apparently um, her services are very much in demand in this area. <laughs> what does that say about the, about the people living in the area? Now, I get soldiers soldiers um, living out here may very well be, like, a lot of them are going to be stationed in the area and not live in the area and they may be single, so it's like, oh, wow, prostitutes, fantastic. But everyone else seems to be like everyone else. You tell me that there's nobody happily married in this place? That's... Uh, whatever. Let's continue. Well, the wolves have been busy, but the blood is long dry. So it is you, Tatian. If that's true, then the body next to hers will be Yannick's. The girl Yannick went off to sea every night. You said her name was Tatian. You. Did you follow me? Now, why would I do that? Unless you think I'd have good reason to. But no. I was sent to find Yannick. And by the looks of things, I have. We both found who we were searching for. Nah, he was a jealous sod. Couldn't stand the thought of his woman with someone else. Then one day he sees her with a new comb. Thinks she's got herself a new gallant. Tells the garrison he's going to find the man and kill him. We know it's all talk, but then he disappears off to Moor for some dealings and doesn't come back. If you mean this comb, it was a gift from the dame. <sighs> if only Yannick had bothered to ask, eh? He might not be rotting on a hill. I think he meant to ask her something else. He stole the old comb and bought her a new one. In the hope they'd wed. Wed? Where would they have gone? Certainly not back to Northreach with a dame waiting. And we all know what happens to deserters. Tell the dame I'm sorry for her loss. When the lads come to collect Yannick's body, I'll see that Tatian is delivered to the Vale. Is that wise? Ah, oh, there won't be any covering up this mess. The most we can hope for is that the dame doesn't hold it against us. Speaking of which... I saw her in Moor just now. Could you tell her what happened? Might sound better coming from you. I need to tell Isabel. Perhaps the comb will give her something to remember Tatian by. All right, so there's a fair bit that has to be unpacked there, and I'm not really going to have the time before the next dialogue scene happens, but that... This doesn't really have much of an impact on our overall story, but it is kind of a disturbing thing that we just stumbled into here. But it's going to take me a minute. If it was a mess... You are still in one piece, I see. You will be pleased to hear that your companions have arrived. They said they would meet you at a little chapel to the east of here. Thank you, but... You needn't have come all this way just to tell me. I was on my way to see you. You... you found her then? I see. 
see. My dear Tatia. It is by no means uncommon for a client to fall for a courtesan. Especially a client who is young and far from home. But rarely do such tales have happy endings. I found this with Tatien. I believe it was yours. Thank you for returning it. I shall see that it has a place on her pyre. I should go. Before you do, I have one last gift. A token of my thanks. The veil counts among its patrons several high-ranking officers of the Imperial Army. According to one of the looser-tongued gentlemen, it would appear that the legions are planning to march south. Or to mention the same thing. Ah. But did he mention that it was all of the legions? This is no mere skirmish. Were I to guess, I'd say the Emperor planned to abandon the capital. But that couldn't possibly be true now, could it? Take care, Clive. I will. And thank you again. This game just keeps getting darker and darker. Now, it did start off pretty dark, but it's getting more disturbing. And the closer we get to the capital, the more everything seems to be immoral and screwed up. You have the very poor treatment of the bearers in this area, but we run across this Tatian and Yannick story. So, he, he is her customer, she's a prostitute, and he falls in love with her. Now, he doesn't realize, for some reason, he doesn't realize that her treatment of him, acting like she cares about him and all, is just her business. So, he takes it personally, and then he goes and decides he wants to marry her, but... He thinks that she's seeing another guy, which she probably is, you know, being a prostitute and all. So he steals her comb, tries to exchange it for a new one, swindle the uh, shopkeeper, <laughs> which doesn't work. And then he presents her with another, a new cheap comb to try to propose marriage to her. She refuses. Uh, this isn't explicitly stated, but it seems pretty obvious that she refuses. And then he kills her out of a fit of rage and then turns the knife on himself. Then the wolves eat the bodies. Now, I've seen it before where people tend to have a misunderstanding. Like, I've never seen it in prostitutes because I've never visited a prostitute before. But I've seen it with people who misinterpret the signals that somebody in, like, a waitress or something may give to you. Or I guess a stripper would maybe be a better example. Where, like, oh, she she likes me because look how nice she is to me and how she smiles when she talks to me and all that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, it's because it's her job. It's her job. Same thing... With Tatian here, she was a prostitute. You paid her for sex. So, of course, she was going to be nice to you. Of course, she was going to give you what you wanted. You weren't able to separate those emotions from the transaction. So, this uh, the video ended quite a while ago, so I should shut the hell up and continue on. See you next time.